A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this to signify by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So he said that is uh, Brother Matthew Paul. He is Dan Grody's younger brother. Right? So uh, Dan comes from a, a big family, and Deacon Matthew Paul here is one of his younger siblings. He was recently ordained to the diaconate and will be ordained, God willing, to the sacred priesthood uh, next spring. So maybe we can uh, make a little parish pilgrimage uh, to go to the ordination uh, today is the Feast of St. Philip Neri. Uh, St. Philip Neri is not exactly one of the most well-known saints uh, among many Catholics, although he's one of the more interesting characters. St. Philip Neri, uh, he's known because he was a sort of practical jokester. So uh, one of the things that he would do is he would find ways to humble himself and to humble some of his disciples. Uh, he's established the oratories of St. Philip Neri in Rome. And some examples of what he would do is uh, when people were complimenting his preaching and things like that, he would find ways to humble himself. So he actually, one time he went to a party having forgotten to shave half of his beard, or at least that's what he was pretending, right? Going to a, a big to-do and having his beard halfway shaved. Another uh, joke he played on one of his disciples to humble him was he had him go into uh, a winery and asked to try a little bit of every bottle of the wine and then at the end to say that he was only going to purchase half a liter, right? And have a one large coin and asked for change, right? So he was just, St. Philip Neri did these kinds of things a lot to himself and to his disciples as a way of humbling them. He was very much a believer in that we should not take ourselves seriously, but that we should take heaven seriously. Saw the need for humility. St. Philip Neri is also significant in church history because he was part of the great era of the Catholic Reformation. Uh, so again, oftentimes when we think about the 15 and 1600s, we hear all about the Protestant Reformation. Really, it should be more accurately called the Protestant Rebellion. Right? They were not reforming the church. Rather, they were choosing to leave the church and establish a new one. But during that time, God raised up some very tremendous saints in the church to renew Catholicism from within. Right? So this is when the Jesuits, for example, were started, right? St. Ignatius of Loyola. Jesuits went all throughout the world evangelizing pagan nations that had never heard the gospel. Uh, this is also the era of St. Charles Borromeo in which the priesthood was definitely reformed. This was before the Council of Trent. After the Protestant Reformation, there were no such thing as seminaries. When people wanted to become priests, you basically just found some priest to mentor you and then find a bishop who would ordain you. There was not intense training for priests. And so St. Charles Borromeo started establishing 
seminaries and also began a renewal of the priesthood. One of the things that was decided at the Council of Trent, and I know this might sound strange to everybody, but in order to be made a bishop, you actually had to reside in your diocese. That wasn't the case before the Council of Trent. There was a great reformation that took place in the priesthood. In many ways, the church was lacking in fervor. And so there were these great reformers that arose. Uh, this is also during the time of St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross, who gave a great spiritual renewal to religious life, to uh, monks and sisters. And then finally, you had St. Philip Neri. St. Philip Neri is called the second apostle to Rome. So he lived most of his ministry in Rome and spent time reforming Rome from within, not as a cardinal at a council, but as a humble priest who was renewing the city by means of his holy advice and confessions and the power of his preaching, but perhaps most significantly through the communities that he formed. He started attracting many disciples, and so they would go on outings throughout the city, and eventually many of the citizens of Rome began to partake in these outings. Uh, they would have readings of sophisticated literature. Uh, they would enact plays. They would sing music. Right? They would do all these different things, instilling in the culture of Rome a renewed sense of beauty and wonder. St. John Paul II called St. Philip Neri the apostle of joy to Rome. Again, something we are very much in need of in today's Catholic Church. So many people have the idea of Catholicism as something that is outdated or boring or dreary. Catholicism is the culmination of joy when truly lived. And we see this in St. Philip Neri. You know, most of these things that I've been saying about St. Philip Neri, one of the things that's very interesting about it is that for a lot of his apostolic work, he was not even a priest. He was ordained to the priesthood later in life. Much of his ministry took place as a layperson. Again, should this spell any sort of ideas that any of us have that as laity, you cannot still be a profound instrument of change in your parish and in your community. St. Philip Neri did most of his ministry, a good chunk of it, before he was ever even ordained to the priesthood. Lastly, significantly about St. Philip Neri, one of my favorite stories about him is that, uh, if I remember correctly, his heart is actually incorrupt. I'd have to check the facts on that, but St. Philip Neri recounts that when he was a young man, he was spending the night in prayer before the Feast of Pentecost, and while he was spending the night in prayer, he had a vision of the Holy Spirit coming to him in a ball of fire, entering in his mouth, and setting his heart on fire. And the rest of St. Philip's life, he never lost that fire. Uh, even sometimes when it was the dead of winter, he would say that he was warm, right? and he would have to uh, undo his collar right? in order to let some of the warmth out. Uh, people testified that when they were around him, they could feel a warmth coming from him. And indeed, when he finally died, when people were examining his body, they saw a profusion from his chest. And when doctors examined it, they discovered that he had actually had a protrusion from his ribs from an enlarged heart. His heart was so on fire with the love of God that it literally was enlarged in his chest. And that's an example of his great holiness. Sometimes when we think about holiness, we think about how many novenas or rosaries we pray or how many masses we attend. But according to St. Thomas Aquinas, the measure of holiness is the fire of love, the fire of charity in your heart for God and for others. And St. Philip Neri is a tremendous witness to us of that. So again, in our modern age in which we are in desperate need of more reform of the church from within, St. Philip Neri is a great patron to invoke. And especially in your own spiritual life, if you feel like you are becoming lax or cold right, in your spiritual life, ask for the intercession of St. Philip Neri to be set on fire with the love of God.